Today's Bible reading is taken from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Now, before I uh, come on to the sermon, I have to do some Martha bits and a couple of Mary bits. So if you're watching that bit, you will notice over the next uh, uh, couple of weeks, there's a a huge amount of activity happening through the life of the church. I'm so sure you're all building up to it uh, at home as well. Um, But there are are all sorts of things happening and there are some sign up sheets for for some of them. Um, uh, So... uh, um, this Saturday, we're starting off, we've got, uh, we're packing the boxes for the Operation Christmas Child, shoe boxes. Uh, if there are any guys who want to come along who don't want to do that, there's going to be plenty of leaves outside to clear up. So we're, well, there's plenty to do Saturday. And that will give you guys uh, uh, a hunger for the evening, uh, for the curry uh, evening, the men's curry evening, and interactive quiz. Gareth, I'm, I'm looking slightly worried. I'm sure I'm in good hands. Um, so that's uh, happening uh, next Saturday. Uh, and as you can see, uh, there are a range of other things. Uh, we've got um, a ladies' event coming up as well. Uh, look at the notice sheet or the website. Do sign up for that. We're also going to be doing our, our, our Christmas uh, carol service here in this building. Because why we're in here is because there's no heating in church. And there isn't going to be any heating this winter. So that's why we're here. So there's going to be a, a list for that. So Jim, can you do a big wave? Just there. Jim's a, so do have a word with Jim if you'd like to, to join our, 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 carol, uh, our choir for that service. Um, uh, anyone welcome. The important thing is when you sing, you smile. Okay? That's the only requirement. Um, everything else will, will, will follow on. So there's a few Martha things, Mary things. We've got two great services happening later on today, uh, Illuminate and our, our communion service. And we have a guest speaker tonight, Keith Davis from Christian Solidarity Worldwide. Some of you from our stage know Keith well. Um, he's coming to tell us about what's happening to Christians around the world and how some are going missing. And our families don't know where they're gone. And also, uh, do come along to those. And tomorrow evening, Monday evening, is our prayer meeting. Uh, Again, that's on Zoom. Do uh, uh, ask for details, either from myself or one of the people that's been up the front. They'll be able to show you those things. Let's pray. Almighty God, in a busy and distracted world, where we forget to relate to each other and to you, Give us your strength now to hear your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What's the most important thing in your life? Do you know? Don't you know? How can you tell what's the most important thing in your life? Well, one of the things that you can tell by is how much time you spend on something or how much it worries you. And that was at the heart of our Bible reading this morning. Jesus, Mary, and Martha. This is not merely an account of a domestic nature, but it speaks to the heart of reality, our human nature. What should be most important in our lives? Now, the context is that Jesus has been touring around with his disciples, and the crowds have been growing as he teaches, heals, and shares the message from God the good news. And he arrives at Martha and Mary's house. And he's met them before. He's a friend of theirs. So he comes to the house, as we're told in verse 38. 
And the two sisters act in very different ways. Verse 39. Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. And verse 40. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. Do you notice here, she isn't doing what is necessary. It doesn't say that. It says that she's distracted. I don't know about you, when you've gone to a friend's house uh, for a meal or something, can you recognize these two different characters? It is usually, I think, the guy, isn't it, who um, sits with you and talks. And I'm sorry to use a stereotype. It's often the woman who's the one who's running around doing all the jobs. But you can see that, can't you? And maybe you can see that in yourselves. Are you the person when somebody comes to visit your house? Are you the one who sits down with them? Or are you the one running around? And when you're running around, do you get slightly angry? Mm, I I can see some looks between uh, partners there. Um, You see, often we're like that. And Jesus isn't saying here when a friend comes to visit, drop everything, do nothing. No, the basic tasks need to be done. But you see, Martha is described as being distracted. Why? Why is she being distracted? Well, when I, I was brought up here in Margate, and one of my friends uh, at school, his dad owned a guest house. And my, he, I got my first job um, when I was um, pre-teens, just about, working as a Saturday boy in the guest house. So the jobs included a sort of bringing all the luggage down of the people leaving on the Saturday, uh, stripping the beds and making the beds. And then we had to wait for the new guests coming. They usually came on coaches in those days from Coventry and all over the country and from London and all over the country. And we usually had the afternoon and we had this task of curling butter. (laughs) You know... You get it in those flashy restaurants, those curls of butter, that when you actually go to pick them up, they fall off the knife. (laughs) Why were we asked to do that? It wasn't very functional. It wasn't actually a good use of time. It was so that the hotel looked impressive. And that's what Martha's doing here. She's trying to impress Jesus. But she's missing the point. You see, she was doing an unnecessary thing to impress Jesus. And Mary, in contrast, was truly relating to Jesus. Again, that question, are you a Martha or a Mary? Are you trying to be seen as impressive by your family, friends, the world, by God? How can you tell? Well, let's read on. What is Martha's complaint? What does she say? Let's look at our orders of service there at the Bible reading. If I can find it just there. What does she say? She says, Lord, don't you care what my sister has left me to do? To do the work by myself. Tell her to help me. Do you notice first... She thinks about herself. Jesus, why aren't you taking notice of what I'm doing? Why aren't you affirming me? Does she really want Mary to help? Or does she want to be seen by Jesus and affirmed? Seen as busy and impressive. By the way, there's a third member of this household who's, who's not in this account. He's called Lazarus. So I imagine the, the lady said, as soon as Jesus arrived, Lazarus, go make yourself scarce. We need to get things sorted. But what is Jesus' response to Martha? Well, he first recognizes the issue, verse 41. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. You see, Jesus doesn't just drive in and say, you're wrong. He 
He says, look, Martha, I understand. I can see your concern. But on this occasion, you're not right. I don't need you to try and impress me. I just need you to listen to me, your friend. And truly let me be your Lord. Just like Mary, Mary is doing. How does it go on? But few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better. We get that answer in verse 42, don't we? Jesus gives Martha the answer and reveals a truth which is relevant to all of us today and is indeed at the heart of our baptism service. Many things worry us, yes. We might have many things on our minds today. It might be that you're starting to think about your Christmas list of all the jobs or all the presents. But Jesus is saying only one thing is needed and everything else will flow from that. Let me be your Lord. Listen to me. Relate to me. Don't get distracted from placing me at the center of your lives. And we live in a world of distraction, don't we? There are so many things we can do. There are so many things that are happening. I must admit, yesterday I had a uh, looking through the television channels, there was so much sport. I could have chosen anything from rugby league to, to everything, to racing. But Jesus is saying here, don't get distracted. Listen to me. Because finally in this passage comes a promise. The end of verse 42. Mary has chosen what is better And it will not be taken away from her. If you give me your life, you will never lose my presence, my peace, and life. And why can we trust that? Well, because who Jesus is. Who is saying these words? Last week we saw that he is the light of life. He is the one and only Son of God who died for our sins. And he's the only way to peace in this world and eternal life forever. Your busyness, your achievements cannot give you that. Yes, we are called to serve. But that's as a response to Jesus, not as a way to Jesus. It's only through him and us knowing him that we can know all those things and have that peace today and life forever. And that's the challenge of this passage. Which sister are you? Are you trying to impress Jesus? Are you so distracted and worried by doing that you've lost sight of the most important person in history? Or will you listen to Jesus and follow him? Because the same thing happens in all relationships, doesn't it? In our families, in our marriages, in our workplaces. If we spend all our time being busy and active and don't relate, our relationships break down. But when we spend that time, time with one another, time with God, then we can know that peace. Now, surprisingly, or maybe not, there is no verse 43. We're not told what Martha's response is. Does she listen to Jesus and come and sit down? Or does she go off in a huff? But that's not the the real issue today. That doesn't matter. What does matter, though, is how you and I will respond to what we have heard this morning and how we will live the rest of our lives And thus the example we will be to Isla. Will we be distracted and live a life of unnecessary busyness and worry? Or will we live with Jesus as our friend, listen to him, and know him at the center of our lives today and forever? The choice is yours. The choice is mine. Let's pray.
Almighty God, you know each one of us. You know what is on our minds. And you know what is at the center of our lives. And dear Lord, we pray that through your spirit this morning, you will show us your love and your truth. Help us to respond so that we might live. Live truly for you and know your life forevermore. Amen.